Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here at the Baxter Cycle in the Mighty Mini Truckless of Barney, Iowa. And look what we got here today. We've seen this bike before. This is quite an amazing machine. This was uh, probably one of the first Royal Enfield Hunters I ever rode. It's back in on a trade. And uh, it's got all kinds of neat stuff. We're gonna take it for a ride. But what I'm gonna point out right away, because the question I always got, I did a video on this, is what kind of tires does it have? It has Shinko Trail Tree SR 244 tires. All right, my friends, I am gonna gear up and we are gonna go for a ride. Wahoo. Let's go find Exhaust Pipe Alley. Let's do the reverse spin today, huh? Turns like a dream, turns like a dream. It's heavy, but it turns like a dream. It's got those big tires on there. Wahoo! I like it. <laughs> this is a fun motorcycle, for sure. Those bar end mirrors are pretty nifty on here. They work pretty good on the Hunter. Picks up speed pretty darn good. Let's do the old figure eight right here. Look at that. I think it's a 53.4 inch wheelbase. 1,369 millimeters, I believe. But you can really tell it's got those large tires on there. And it still picks up pretty good, I'd say. Nice, big foothill over yonder, just above that house. I like the brakes, very good brakes. Welcome to South Barney. The bike has a good sound to it, doesn't it? That's a stock pipe, amazingly. One of the first things I noticed earlier when we started it. Look at how well this thing turns. Like a dream, like a dream. 300 millimeter disc on the front. Dual piston by recalibre. I love it, I love it. 270 millimeter disc on the back with a single piston by recalibre. Look at that thing, huh? Just runs like a dream. It's got the 349 cc. Single cylinder, air cooled, oil cooled, single overhead cam. You know what, let's take it down the road just a little bit, not too far. Make some noise, huh? All running through a five speed transmission. The motor puts out 20 horsepower and about 20 foot pounds of torque. That's about 27 newton meters. Boy, it really does well on this bike. <laughs> the tires make it feel a little tweaky. You know, they're a great big knobby tire. Do a little spin right here. Boy, the brakes work fabulous. Very good, very good. 5.1 inches of travel on the front fork. It's a 41 millimeter fork with a 5.1 inches of travel. That's about 130 millimeters. Dual shocks on the back with 4.8 millimeters of uh, travel. I think that's 119 or 118 millimeters, something like that. This is the most nimble handling of all of them. This does have 17 inch tires front and rear. In stock, I think it's a 110, 70, 17, and then a 140, 70, 17 on the rear. Of course, even though this has 17s, it's got uh, these massive tires on them. Very good looking tire, I'd say. Hey, let's do the uh, quick spin test here, see how that does. Da, da, da. You can feel the weight of those tires and the bars. All right, my friends, next time you get yourself over here to the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie, Iowa, make sure you get over to the derail grill and try the Wahoo Burger. A Marnie delicacy. Life is good, life is good. Seating position is, well, you're leaning forward, you're reaching to the bars, not terribly so, but you are reaching to them. Your hips and knees, I feel about about level, about flat. Maybe down a little bit on the knee. Knee a little lower than the hip. Your heels are definitely behind your knees and up a little higher than usual, I would say, or at least they feel they feel so. It's the most aggressive seating position of all the 350s. The classic, the Hunter, and the Meteor. Look at the leaves on those trees. Beautiful, beautiful. It is that time of year. Do a quick spin right through here. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have caught on, but I do like going in circles. <laughs> oh yeah, comfortable. The seat height is 31.1 inches in stock form. That is about uh, 790 millimeters, I'd say. 
Wet weight is 400 pounds. That is about 181 kilograms. Not too darn bad, I'd say. Welcome to East Marnie, by the way. They did put these built well grips on here, and that's kind of an interesting feel. Very kind of a barrel shaped grip with a lot of a cushion to them, so you can really feel them when you squeeze. I do like it. They also put these bar end mirrors on here, Royal Enfield bar end mirrors, and on this bike they work very well. Look at how well this thing turns, huh? <laughs> what a hoot, what a hoot. Hey, let's head down to Motorcycle Park by Gully. We should be able to get in there. See, it does this stuff just fine. Look at this, little rough spots. <laughs> hey, simmer down, simmer down by Gully, simmer down. <laughs> Oh, what a nice bike. First off, just the overall look. I love the way it looks with those tires. I love those tires on there. Very good looking. You can feel it at low speeds. You can feel it when you're going down the road, uh, you know, around town handling it. They are a little heavy, but they're a lot of fun too, you know. Anyway, very aggressive looking motorcycle. He did some good add-ons to it. We already talked about what the bike was, I guess. But uh, So he did the, uh, the big tires on here, the Shinkos. He did the high fender right through here. The headlight guard right there, bar end mirrors, the built well grips, I like that a lot. It sounds like it has a pipe, but it doesn't. Uh, these are my Tourmaster gloves, Polar Techs. I wore these, I did a 200 mile ride this morning and I got caught about 90 miles of rain. They worked, <laughs> thank goodness. Uh, Royal Enfield seat, this is a signature series seat that is not the stock seat. Very good looking seat, isn't it? I think the guy did a pretty good job overall. You know, they did a pretty good job making this thing look like a hot rod between him and Baxter's. Just very aggressive, very, it's a load of fun to, oh, skid plate on the bottom, RE skid plate on the bottom. I love the way everything is blacked out, you know, the black up here, just uh, very well done. That pipe, it's hard to believe that's a stock pipe because it does sound so good. Hey, let's jump up here and take a quick look at the uh, Oculus as I call it. So this thing right here, on the outside is an analog speedometer. You turn it on here, isn't that cool? Look at how it does that. There is a digital fuel gauge on the inside of this little LCD in the center. Always visible gear indicator, always visible clock. Down here is the odometer. And using this button right here, you can change that from odometer to trip A to trip B, back to odometer. There's a battery light, ABS light, engine light. Neutral light, of course. Let's see what else we got there. And a fuel light if you need it. So, uh, nice, very nice. Over here, we've got this uh, information button right here. Pass to flash, low beams, high beams, blinkers, the horn. Then down here, I always forget to mention this. This is a USB port right here. It's covered, there you go. So it's protected from the weather and it's active. If it's like If it's like my classic 350, it's active when the bike's running. Otherwise, it's off. On this side, it is a kill switch, run switch, and then a rocker switch for start. It rocks back and forth. And I like the way they've colored that red. That's kind of a throwback to days gone by. Hazard lights right there, fuel. Now, something I want to point out, and I always try to point out on these, these are some of my favorite levers. They've got a really nice sweep to them. They've got a nice thin area through here. They're wider right through here, too, where your fingers hit it. And they've got this very nice radius. And they worked very well with the uh, factory grips that come here. Royal Enfield has these uh, factory kind of a mall style grips and they also work pretty good with this one. But lots of feel, a lot of good range there for your hand, you know. I like it a lot. I also like this, by the way. Doesn't that look good on the front? Yeah. A lot of neat stuff there, a lot of neat stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, now if you are interested in a newer used Royal Enfield Triumph, classic British bike of any type. Need parts, thingamajigs, doodads, anything at all. Coats, like this beautiful Nervic jacket I'm wearing. By the way, 90 miles of rain in this jacket today. I stayed dry on the inside. <laughs> it passed, it passed. I was worried because it had so many zippers, but uh, very happy with it. Anyway, if you need anything like that, boots, shoes, gloves, gear, anything at all, get yourself over to Baxter Cycle in the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie, Iowa, or go to BaxterCycle.com. Make sure you tell them fine folks that Fuzzy Biker sent you. Now, it's a bit of a windy day, and I have rode quite a bit of motorcycle already today, but you know what? I think I'm going to go ride some more. Life is good. Get out there and ride if you can, my friends. Wahoo!